Welcome back to the channel. We are the Yambors, and this is the Pregnancy Series. So we recently had a pregnancy scare, and in this episode of the Pregnancy Series, we want to share with you the scare that we faced and just the high emotions that were involved with it. So with that said, let's talk about it. We're pregnant. We're pregnant. We are having a baby. There were a lot of emotions involved with that scare that we had, and I'll never forget it. It was during the first trimester, so I was probably about 11 weeks at that time, yep. a little over 11 weeks, actually, because it was after our first doctor's visit. Right. It was a couple weeks after our doctor's visit. So at that point, I was probably like closer to 13 weeks when it happened, actually. Oh, OK. So that would mean that that's like closer to the that's like the for into the first trimester beginning of the second trimester yes okay yes. so i can't remember exactly but it was somewhere between that 12 like uh, between the 11 and 13 week range yeah i'll never forget i went to go use the bathroom in the middle of the night and i tend to use the bathroom when it's like three in the morning i know where the bathroom is so i just go with the lights off because i don't want to wake myself up yeah so, I'm, I'm the same way yeah so i'll just use the bathroom with the light off and i was using the bathroom and I went to go, you know, obviously wipe and everything. And I noticed that there was a ton of blood in the toilet. Mm. And at first, because it was so dark, it didn't quite it didn't quite register. But I realized, like, OK, urine doesn't normally look this color. Something's not right. Right. So when I turned the light on and I noticed all the blood, I began freaking out like, oh, my gosh. What, I know that's, going that's on? scary. It was very scary. And, you know, it wasn't like we had any issues prior to that. So. Going from everything being fine and then just waking up randomly in the middle of the night to a bunch of blood in the toilet was yeah. very scary because the th first thing that I thought was I'm having a miscarriage. I know that is scary. So how much blood was it? I mean, like, was it a lot of blood to the point where the entire the entire toilet was red? Wow. Yeah. So that freaked me out. And I remember just trying to calm myself down and just try to get some rest and call the doctor in the immediately in the morning because I knew it was like 3 a.m. I right. would just call first thing in the morning, just try not to stress myself out, freak out and think of the worst. Um, because I didn't see anything else, it was just blood. I was like, I think I'm okay to um, hold off until the morning. So the morning comes around and I called my doctor immediately, of course, and explained to her the situation. And she asked me, she was like, well, are you still bleeding now? And I told her, you know, very lightly, not as heavy as before. And she said, well, if you continue to bleed, let's, you know, let's keep an eye on it. But it's good that it has lessened. Right. Um, and you didn't notice any, you didn't notice any, like, inconsistency, like, with the blood. Right. You know, as far as, like, not trying to go into great detail and graphics of it. But because it was just blood alone, she was like, "You let's just keep an eye on it. If you are still bleeding throughout the day or it starts to um, get heavy, I need you to come in ASAP. Right. So she was like, let's monitor. It. I'll call you in the, the next day in the morning. Mm -hmm. So it did lighten up. And then the next day she called me first thing in the morning was like, hey, so what's going on? Are you still bleeding? And I told her that I was just spotting at that point. And she said, well, for precautionary, I want you to come in. Like you come in, let's do a sonogram of you, of the baby. Let's check you out. Let's make sure everything is OK. So when she said all right let's have you come in mm -hmm. did that give you a little bit of anxiety and did that make you feel like ah oh, man like she wants me to come in that means there there must be something yeah. wrong or did you feel more comfort actually it was 50 50. i felt comfort because i wanted to be sure that everything is okay so going into yeah. the doctor's office and having that confirmation gave me more reassurance that everything is fine versus her if she would have just said everything is fine don't worry about it i think personally there would have been a part of me that's like uh but i don't right. know let me i want to be in the doctor's office the confirmation only, definitely getting testing done etc it gives comfort yeah but at the same time i was also <clears throat> freaking out because what if there is something wrong with the right. baby what if there's something wrong with me you know i just started thinking immediately like the health of me and the baby what's right. going on are we okay and, and that kind of takes me to the point of just the emotions of it all mm -hmm. like that first trimester is so emotional because first off you're you're finding out you have a, a baby yeah then it's it, your mind shifts to okay now i've got to do everything in my power to keep this baby healthy and keep yeah. this baby growing on track with where the baby should be mm -hmm. and 
there's just a lot of emotions involved. So when something like that happens. And you're battling the the symptoms that you're getting with it as well. Battling the symptoms. So it's a lot of emotions. A lot of emotions. Um, But I feel like you've been handling it well. And, you know, after that day and then we went in, um, you know, what was the rest of the day like? You know, continue with the story of what you were saying. Yeah, so I do remember that. And thank you for saying that I've been handling it well. Because you have. I've been trying to do that to my best ability. But I will be honest and say that I was not handling it well mentally when I got the scare. Because for me, when... And I know this isn't good, but I, I'm a what-if kind of person at times. And then thoughts tend to ruminate. And I'm like, what if everything's not okay? What if it's me? Yeah. What if this baby... And, and it was hard for me to kind of get out of my head. And mm-hmm. I was freaking out because I just kept thinking, am I okay? And is the baby okay? And I was, you know, struggling with that a little bit. And I just wanted to get to the doctor's appointment. So the day before, I was very stressed because I just had a lot of anxiety building up to the appointment. I just wanted to get there to have answers. Right. And I didn't have answers at the time. Right. So, you know, it was, it was it was very emotional and it was very stressful for me. But when I got to the doctor's appointment and I realized there were a lot of emotions and I will say that it was I personally felt like it was hard for me keeping those emotions at bay that day and leading up to the appointment. Well, that's pretty interesting, actually, to hear, because I feel like you were handling it pretty well. And Mm -hmm. from, you know, the conversations that we had and obviously I went with you to the appointment, Mm -hmm. um, it seemed like you had your emotions in check and there wasn't, you know, I was trying to keep my emotions in check as well to make sure that you Mm -hmm. are okay. Because I know that, you know, if, if I am anxious Mm -hmm. or if I'm nervous, it's going to make you more nervous. So, so I want to make sure, cause I'm in the same, we're in the same, we're in the boat together. Yeah. You know, you're you're the one carrying the baby. You're doing the hard labor, Mm -hmm. but this is also my child too. And and you are my little, my baby too. Yeah. So, you know, I want to make sure (laughs) both of you guys are okay Mm -hmm. um so i am going through the emotions as well but i want to make sure you know as the man to like assure you that you're Mm -hmm. okay and that a baby's okay yeah and so i was going through it a little bit too inside before we got any results back from the doctor Mm -hmm. but just making sure that you knew that we're going to get through this and that everything is going to be okay and i remember us having that conversation and you said you know, regardless of the outcome, we're going to get through this together. Mm -hmm. And that was very comforting because you need that reassurance. You need, you need to have support. Yeah. And I definitely needed the support in that moment when I was going through it. And even though it may have seemed like to you that I was handling it well to the best of my ability, I didn't feel like that. Mm. And so it was nice to have that comfort from you and that support to say, well, regardless of what happens, you know, we're going to pray about it and we're going to go to this appointment and regardless of the outcome we'll get through it together yeah Mm -hmm. so tell us about what the doctor said Mm -hmm. and what what they wanted to do we we did a sonogram right yep so we got to the appointment and they immediately did a sonogram to make sure that the baby was doing okay and they also did some testing and check the heartbeat yeah so they did the sonogram they did a heartbeat they checked the heartbeat and then they also um did a urine sample for me and they also did labs as well just to make sure my levels and everything uh, were okay so baby heartbeat was nice and strong Yay! baby was pushing through we can say he now right? we can say he Yay! we can say he we, we did, did the reveal we did the reveal <laughs> if you haven't seen that video go check it out check but it out for sure long story short we we had the scare and of course there's so many emotions to mm-hmm. You know, just that first trimester and mm-hmm. obvi- and even the second trimester and third trimester. Mm-hmm. But the one that can always be a little dangerous and, you know, the, the possibilities of uh, just filled with so much uncertainty, so much uncertainty sure. in the first trimester leading into the second trimester. And so we had that scare. Mm-hmm. We did all the testing. We did the sonogram. Everything came back fine, yeah. which is exactly what we wanted to hear and Mm -hmm. it alleviated us from feeling like ah dang like yeah the baby's not gonna be okay but the baby is okay and so what was the bleeding then yeah so i'm glad we got to that point i was going to say so the doctor asked me immediately like are you doing any heavy lifting Mm -hmm. and i told her no she said um i know you said that you're pretty active 
are you doing like heavy working out? Like, have you lifted some heavy weights or anything? Are you on your feet a lot? And are you stressed? And I told her no to the majority of those things. I said, my, my job right now is pretty stressful just because we're, we were in the transition of mm-hmm. a move. I said, but outside of that, you know, everything is, is pretty fine, you know? And she was like, well, you know, a lot of times as the uterus is growing, as the uterus is growing, there's a lot of little, um, I'm not a doctor, so I could be getting this wrong, but a lot of little vessels and arteries and things like that. And as the uterus is being stretched, it one of them more than likely burst. It. Mm. And so that's what caused the bleeding. And she did say that also, you know, bleeding is common in pregnancy, even though it's not discussed a lot. You know, bleeding does happen in pregnancy. But of course, you still want to keep an eye out on right. it. And to everyone that may have gone through something similar or may potentially go through something like this, always consult with your doctor just to be sure. Um, We're not doctors, and this is just from our personal experience. So we definitely encourage you, if you have any scares or any doubt, to rule it out, go to the doctors, because you just always want to make sure that your safety and the baby's safety are the number one priority. So Yeah, so have you had any bleeding since? No, and I haven't had any bleeding since. Yeah. So and after, I think that's what the doctor really wanted to make keep an eye on. Right. And she did say that if, if I did have any bleeding, of course, just to consult her every time so mm-hmm. we can determine what's in the safe zone and what's considered cause for concern. Right. And so thank goodness I was still in the safe zone when that happened. Um, she also said that sometimes there's like residual bleeding that happens, mm-hmm. um, you know, from a pre- from your uh, previous... Um, period and things like that, like old blood that your body is releasing. Right. So it could be a number of things why that happened. But for me, she said that it it more than likely was a vessel that burst it from my uterus expanding and stretching. But she told me to definitely take it easy, rest. If I even have an inkling that it might be heavy or strenuous, don't do it. And I took her, I took her advice and I did not do anything and I took it easy. And I and that's also why I really took my time with um, working out because after having that scare, I was definitely like, yeah. I don't want to put me or the baby at risk. Like I will go at my own pace. And mm-hmm. when it's time for me to move in a health, a healthy and safe way, I'll do it. Um, so we're very fortunate and we're very lucky that yeah. all was fine. It was just a scare. It was nothing that was any cause for concern, yeah. but there were a lot of emotions involved with it. And it also pro- let us know too, that there are other couples that go through stuff like, or, or moms that go through this um, or have gone through something even worse before, or may have gone through it alone. Right. And, you know? and that's why we want to put this content out there and, mm-hmm. you know, just be vulnerable and be authentic with you guys, yeah. because we know that pregnancy and we're going through this right now that Mm -hmm. there's a lot of emotions with it and a lot of things aren't talked about openly Mm -hmm. even if you're talking to your family you're talking to you know a close friend like sometimes you just feel like you don't want to say certain things to somebody because you don't really want to talk about it or you Mm -hmm. feel embarrassed or or stuff like that but you know we want to be authentic and that's what this channel is about this is what the the conversations that we have is all about Mm -hmm. and just be as candid as possible with this pregnancy journey and just you know love relationships marriages everything Mm -hmm. that we talk about we want to be candid with everything that we do and this is definitely something that goes right in line with what we practice and i know it can help a lot of people out there because i know there's people there's millions of people that are youtubing and 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 googling pregnancy scares because they had a scare they had a scare yeah if you're watching this and you're getting some value and this is comforting hopefully or you're getting some education from it this is what we want to do like just yeah and we can't wait to continue to share our journey with you guys as you mentioned babe and you know, like you said, we're being candid, we're being open, and we understand that other people are going through it as well, or mm-hmm. may look at these videos and say, oh, wow, I learned a lot from that. Like, now when I go to, you know, prepare for a pregnancy, I can use this as, yeah. as education or just having some insightful info. Right. Like, oh, I didn't know that. Now I can apply this information going forward. And That's a good point. Yeah. Because, you know, w- we often are talking when we're talking about the pregnancy series, we're thinking that everybody that's watching this is pregnant mm-hmm. or going through the process right mm-hmm. now. But there's also people that aren't pregnant yet, but are right. thinking about it in the mm-hmm. near future and they are getting value from this. So right. that's definitely a good point. And, you know, we're talking about something that happened in the 
end of the first trimester mm-hmm. or beginning of the second trimester. But yeah, it was the, the end of the first trimester. Yeah. I believe, yeah. But the reality is we're still going through it. Yeah. You know, there's still emotions that that we have that, you know, th- there's things that are out of our control. Yes. We just got to continue to pray mm-hmm. and, and believe that the baby will be OK, do the right things, mm-hmm. eat the right things. And but at the end of the day, the reality is that there is always risk with pregnancy right. in the first, second and third trimester, right. even even with the pregnancy itself. Mm-hmm. Um, so. We make this content and it's risky even to just make this content because, hey, and you know, anything can happen. Right. Um, but we realize that this is a great opportunity in a unique time in our lives. Mm-hmm. We've been together for 12, 13 years. And this is the first time we are experiencing something like this, yeah. which is pregnancy that only lasts nine months. Right. So taking this unique ex- experience that we have in this short window of time and talking about it, talking about the emotions of everything that's going on in the first, second, third trimester into pregnancy. And then even after the baby is born. Yeah. I think it's it's a beautiful thing. And hopefully we'll be able to show this to our little baby boy and mm-hmm. he'll be able to. He'll be able to see this years and he'll down be able the line. To see his journey, you know, he'll and what, what we went through as parents to just prepare him mm-hmm. for the best life possible. And it starts before he's, you know, he makes it to this world. Right. You know, we're prepping and doing what we can as parents to make sure that he is having just a healthy transition from start to entering the world. And it, it'll be amazing for him to look back when he's a little bit older and can understand, you know, the context of these videos to to know how much he's loved and mm-hmm. just us documenting this experience. And he can be like, whoa, this is what my parents were going through when I was only four months or yeah. four months old um, in the belly, you know, in yeah. the womb, when you know, into creation. And so it's just going to be really beautiful to reflect back as a collective, as an entire family and have him look back at these videos as well. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I think to wrap up this video, this is all about pregnancy scares. And just know that it's okay to feel a little bit of nervousness, a little bit of anxiety. Mm -hmm. And if it is a scare, I mean, you definitely want to talk to your doctor, regardless of any situation. Mm -hmm. But it's just a high emotional state for nine months of just making Mm -hmm. sure that your baby is good. And that's what we're going through right now. But pregnancy is a journey. Pregnancy is a journey for sure. And for those of you who may be on the journey as we're filming these videos, we wish you all the best of luck. And we pray that if you have had a scare, that it's something that you were able to work through and get over the hump. And for those that are hoping to have, you know, a baby in the future, we wish you the best of luck and just know that there are a lot of emotions involved and there are a lot of ebb and flows when it comes to to pregnancy. But you'll get through it for sure, hopefully. Exactly. So we're going to sign off for today. My name is Shane. I'm Jen. And this is the Yambors. Bye, everyone. Enjoy the journey. Oh. He said, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Not you. Uh. Not you, but you are journey bear. That was good. Girl. Yeah, that was good. Boom. So you can make the boom sound, but you can't explode the bomb. Oh, hell no. We don't explode bombs over here. That's so annoying.